In this module, we're going to examine what the implications for structure and organization are when one applies the care and growth model. In the first instance, you'll remember that when we examined the basic axioms that go into the care and growth model, it became apparent to us that when one empowers, it has an effect on control. And we therefore concluded that care and growth implies an incremental suspension of control in order to enable the subordinate. If the question is what does control mean in an organization, then really control is about all those mechanisms that one applies that are concerned with producing predictable outcomes. So if one's going to suspend control, then this will definitely have an implication for an organization. So if one considers what the mechanisms for control are, then in the first instance, one should ask oneself, well, what are you trying to control? And you, what you're trying to control is the, the task and the results, if you like. If you're trying to control the results or produce a predictable outcome, the first thing that you have to do is you've got to take the task that's being done and cut it into discrete bites. That cutting of the task into discrete bites is about producing budgets or targets or key performance areas, job descriptions, it's about defining levels of authority and hierarchy. All of these things are really concerned with structure. So the problem of structure is concerned with the problem of defining the discrete bites of work, which get done in order to produce a result. Once those discrete bites of work are defined, then the next problem is to put those discrete bites together in procedures or processes or policies that orchestrate together for the organization to work. And that second piece we call the production of system. So in a sense, an organization is really a web of control mechanisms that one understands either from the point of view of system or structure. Now, if one incrementally suspended control, it clearly means you'd affect both of those variables, structure and system. And if we consider what that meant for structure, then in the first instance, it would imply a flattening of the organization. That flattening of the organization we would call vertical empowerment, and it's really concerned with the incremental shift of decisions down the hierarchy. So at every level of the hierarchy, each boss, if you like, is incrementally giving decisions that he's currently taking to a subordinate, and he's giving the subordinate the means and the ability and the accountability to make those decisions. However, that's not the only implication because clearly not only does the organization's apex come closer to the base, but the second implication is that the base gets broader and we call that broadening of the base of the organization horizontal empowerment. And what that really means is it implies an incremental shift of decisions from support functions to the line. So, for example, decisions that would previously sit in functions such as an HR function or a purchasing function, now incrementally come back into the line. So the incremental sense of suspension of control has two effects on structure. It has a vertical effect, which you can call the vertical empowerment, which is concerned with the incremental shift of decisions down the hierarchy. And there's a horizontal effect, which you can call horizontal empowerment, which is concerned with the incremental shift of decisions from support functions to the line.